All right. Um, when we have algebraic expressions, we want to be able to combine like terms. So first of all, what are like terms? So like terms, it contain the exact same variable factors. So the exact same variable factors raised to the same powers. Well, the powers tell us how many of those factors we have. So if we look at um, some examples of like terms, um, here I have negative 2x. The variable factor is just x. 3 fourths times x, well, the variable factor is x. And then 0 0.2 times x. These are all like terms. It doesn't matter what the coefficients are. Um, these are like terms. Um, even if the variable factors, so here we have x squared and y, which is basically factors of x, x, and y. It doesn't matter what order the factors are written. So this term has factors of y, x, and x. So these are the same factors. And again, it doesn't matter the order. So these are like terms. Now, we, we have to be careful. Again, when we see unlike terms, um, so the first term has a variable factor of x. And the second term doesn't have a variable factor at all. So I cannot combine those, or I can't, those are not alike. And of course, the variable factor on this one is just y. So y and x, are, of course, are different. What do you notice about the difference here? Well, again, I have to be careful when I see them. Um, what are the variable factors? Well, here it's x, x, because it's x squared, and then y. But this one has factors of x, and then the y is squared. That means there would be two y's. So even though those, the same variables are there, we have to have the same number of factors of each two. And that's why they're not alike. So let's look at another thing about multiplication. And we kind of talked about this earlier, too. But multiplication represents a grouping of like things. So it's repeated addition. But it, if we understand it as a group of like things or quantities, so like 4x, if we look at this term, this 4x term, we can actually think of it as 4 times x, or 4 x's added together. So here's we have a group of 4 x's added together. I'm going to add that to another group of 2 x's here. So now I have a group, basically a total group of 6 x's. So we can combine these like terms, 4 x plus 2 x, and get 6 x. So if you think, the coefficient basically just acts like term counters, like how many like quantities or like things I have. Um, it works the same ways. It works the same way if we had quantities, like 4 um, inches plus 2 inches. So this would be the same as adding, basically adding together. That would be 6 total inches. So variables and quantity or units act the same way. So to combine like terms, we just combine their coefficients. So again, we have to, when we see an expression with a bunch of terms in it, again, we have to see it as basically just separate terms. So I have one, two, three, four, five terms. And it, I don't have to write them in any order. I can combine them in any order. So I need to look for like terms. So if you notice the terms with x squared, as a variable factor are here and here. I can combine those terms together by just grouping them. I have 5 x squareds and 3 x squareds. That would be 8, a total of 8 x squareds if I combine those together. Um, I have negative 7 and negative 10. These are constants. And of course, I can combine those together um, to get negative 17. And then I have this x term. And there's no other term like it. So these three terms then are combined, and they're not alike. So this expression is simplified. Um, now, we could rewrite this expression, and a lot of times we do, um, with the term with a variable to the highest degree first, and then descending power or highest power. So sometimes you write the terms in order of their variable factor powers. All right, so let's look at this next one. And again, it, it doesn't matter how many terms we have. We don't have to rewrite. We just need to search out for like terms that we can combine. 
So as we do this, we just want to kind of keep track of our answer. So let's look for the x terms. Is there any more x terms? And there is another one right here. So I have 8x and negative 10x. So I can combine those together to get negative 2x. So those are done. Um, let's look at the y term. So I have a y term here and a y term here. They both have a variable y. So I have negative 7 and 8. And if I combine those together, I get 1y. So I don't need to actually write 1y. I can just write plus y. And it's understood to be 1y. I don't need the coefficient of 1 in front of it. Then I do have two constants left. I have a positive 5 and a negative 5. And when I combine those together, I just get 0. So nothing's added. So this expression, we can combine like terms to get negative 2x plus y.